Uh, so first of all, thank you, Ron, uh, for bringing me again here, and thank you everyone for coming back. Uh, today's topic, as you heard, we are going to talk about uh, Azure Open AI. Um, so my name is Bala. I'm a cloud solutions architect with Microsoft. Been in this space for a while now. So and mostly working on uh, a lot of uh, um, digital transformation, AI, and machine learning type projects. I might go off of uh, video to save the bandwidth. Um, please do ask questions if you have, um, or um, you know, however you want to uh, want to put it in the chat, um, Q and A chat. That's also fine. Um, so today we'll do two things. One, I'll I'll give you some introduction on Azure Open AI services, what we are doing, and then we'll see a, a simple demo. Um, if you're interested in asking any common uh, like a questions that you wanted to try out, uh, put put in the chat window, uh, or when the demo comes, come out of mute and ask. We'll try and see live. So hopefully it works. So Azure Open AI, um, what are we doing? So Microsoft has a um, couple of things going on. We have an investment uh, with Open AI. You probably have heard. We have been investing with them for the past three years. Um, a few of the things. Uh, we run the open AI infrastructure in cloud. So they do train their AI models in our cloud as well. Um, and what do they do? Um, these are the models that came out of that. Uh, GPT-3, which is supposedly the largest, uh, I mean, the large scale language model. Uh, we have Codex. Uh, if you have used GitHub Copilot, you would have been very, um, you would have used the uh, Codex model at that point. DALI is like the text to uh, image generation, and we'll see what that means is. So GPT-3 is the biggest one, um, which is, this is what we call, it's GA now. Um, you can sign up and uh, get access to it. It can do a lot of things. It's a multi-model, uh, which means it can do multiple tasks in the language domain itself. Um, so you can ask it to um, uh, write a story, write an email, write a blog, or summarize it. No problem, GPT will do. Codex is another one, which is, which is if we give them plain text um, in natural language, what code to write, it'll actually create code. Like in this case, it's creating a SQL statement. We can do uh, Custo, we can do Terraform, we can do CLI, we can do Python, PySpark, so many different types. DALI is, it has, DALI is very, uh, very interesting and it also has only very few uh, use cases, uh, but it can, if you describe a scenario, uh, the AI will generate an email. So uh, this is an era of generative AI. So this is not just regular uh, traditional AI. So it is going to create content for us. Now you can ask like, okay, what is Microsoft doing? Um, so what we do with OpenAI is like, we take the open AI model and we provide you the enterprise grade, which means um, you can train it for your own scenario and make it your own personal uh, personal company oriented um, context based past. We have bots. We also do actually uh, put responsible AI around it. We also provide you the security, which is like our back and private VNets and things like that. Now, and uh, Azure uh, scale is available to grow your needs. This is what we are adding on top of open AI models. We are not touching the uh, underlying model itself. That is still, and it will be maintained by open AI. Now this will become part of our uh, cognitive services. Uh, that is our uh, plan. Uh, and it will also get integrated. On top of it, what we are doing, we provide you security control. We are also giving you the inferencing. We are adding the security and reliability and billing options for, for, for you guys. So this is what Azure OpenAI, which is basically enterprise ready OpenAI is what we are providing. Now, this is a, you want to know like how, how the uh, history evolves uh, in the large scale model. In GPT-3, there are a few multiple options that are available. Ada, Babbage, Curie, and Da Vinci. These are different generations of model. I said the model, you see the model go high. Uh, the model gets very big and large and inferencing time increases. Um, but also the functionality of the capability also goes up with um, Da Vinci and all. Um, 
I'll show you a demo of DaVinci. Uh, Cushman uh, Codex and DaVinci Codex are the two that are available uh, for if you want to use um, your own code repo and build your own co-pilots. Um, of course, get GitHub Copilot, but that's also um, available in the market at this point. Um, what is GPT-3? Uh, it is called, you can see the name, Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Uh, the model is trained with public uh, data set. Uh, it, it it creates amazing content. When you see the demo, you probably will be experiencing it. Um, and it also understands the context behind it. Um, now, we are making this model very uh, easy to anybody to consume. Uh, so these models are coming in as a, a REST API. Um, We'll talk about ChatGPT. Uh, ChatGPT just got integrated. What, what happens is the major difference is GPT-3, uh, a base model of GPT-3 is what uh, we use for um, ChatGPT. So GPT-3 has got 170 billion parameters. Um, ChatGPT is 3.5, which is about 1.5 billion parameters. Um, there are differences um, because just what I'm showing you is much more powerful. But the advantage GPT 3.5, uh, 3 which is Chat GPT has, is it's more of a conversational piece. So if you can ask it something, it can actually track the conversation and it'll it can respond based on your conversation. Um, that won't exist in this open AI GPT 3 models. But GPT 3 models you can integrate it with any of your application. So that's why it's general purpose. It's pretty easy to integrate. Um, here is a little bit of detailed uh, around what are the um, models and what they are good for. Um, ADA is pretty awesome because for simple classifications and parsing and formatting text and all, um, this is the most cheapest one. And you can also use it for embeddings. Um, Babbage is good for semantic searches uh, and then a little bit harder classification. Curie allows you to do Q&A. It also allows you to do uh, summarization as well. DaVinci is what the most advanced version is. It can uh, summarize and it can convert languages and it can create um, creative content for you. That is one of the biggest thing. Uh, the next in the line is uh, Codex model. As you can see, um, if you just, uh, this is integrated with Visual Studio Code. You can actually, as you can see the demo, uh, if you write something and if it hit tab, it will fill up the code for you. Uh, it is not writing code for you. It is only giving you suggestions of code. You guys still, there is human has to be in the loop for all these models that we are providing to make sure things are happening in the right way. So we are big in uh, bringing uh, AI to humans, but humans take the control of that, right? Um, that's very, very important for us. All these, as I said, it's made it much easier. Now, here are some of the uh, codex models available. Um, what it can do, um, what languages that it can cover and things like that. Um, we look at this in an experiment, then you will understand what, what I'm talking about. Um, there is also an option to fine tune. So basically, we understand the natural, uh, the, the regular uh, APIs are tuned in, uh, you know, like um, uh, public ops, right? So general knowledge wise. But if you wanted to make it your own, uh, you can. Um, we have something called few shot learning, uh, which you can actually produce very little information and get the output you want. Or we can also do like a large scale, like prompt engineering and completion and um, fine tune your model to your own domain as well. Um, so this is basically the summarization of it. Um, now let's talk about uh, region availability. Like since the demand uh, models are not available everywhere, please do uh, put a concentration of what, um, what either ADA, Babbage, or DaVinci, which models you want to use and, and create the resource in that particular region. Um, we are very big in responsible AI. So everything that you're going to use, um, some of the content filtering will look for some, some of these hate and sexual and all these contents. Uh, and we also have logs, uh, but we don't store your data forever. Uh, we'll have it for review and um, validation purpose only. Um, mostly it is the number of tokens and things like that. And then 
we also request uh, all our customers who are using to also make sure that you, you also have a way of making sure that you're using the models in an appropriate way. Um, that is very, very, very important for us, from Microsoft and for our customers to be successful as well. So that being said, so these are some of the use cases that we are seeing. Uh, mostly everything is based on natural language and that's what we see a lot. Um, here is a very quick summarization of uh, what the use cases that you can go and target, especially in the call center analytics side, uh, personalized website, and then uh, whoa, looking at the support law, support uh, call logs and seeing what, what is happening, summarization or sentiment and things like that. Social media trends and summarization, creating social media content is one very good thing. This one is code generation, which is the codex model. And then a lot of people are using it for knowledge mining and also for uh, search service and things like that. So this is basically on a very high level. Like I've also seen uh, folks using this for writing professional emails um, and things like that, that even I use it in my day-to-day -day, uh, day -day, um, email generations for my customers. Um, I'll have the information and pass it on to open AI to get me in a proper documented way. And it, it writes an amazing email, amazing blogs it writes. Um, so these are all some of these extra use cases that we are seeing that how it is coming. Um, PPA is a one good thing. Um, business process automation where a lot of people want to extract information out of unstructured data like documents, PDF. This works very well. Um, just to give you a quick answer, the model was uh, a open AI model, Azure open AI model was trained up to end of 2020. Um, that's the corpus that we have. Um, is there an, uh, uh, there are some works to uh, retrain those models, um, but there is a version of it that's already retrained for, um, for chat GPT for Bing. I'll show you a demo of that. Um, just to give you an idea, this is a demo app that I put together just to show you that one API, what it can do, and DALI. That's the inten intention of here. Um, so let's look at different features, this, what uh, the same API can do. So the first one is summarize text. Um, I, I have sample text created already, just in case, uh, to just before I, if I don't forget it, right? So if I send in a text like this, and if I send it to the API, it will automatically summarize it and get me an output. So this is a live demo, by the way. Um, so this came out from the uh, model itself. Now, this is a, a generative model. So if I send in the same text, don't expect the same answer. It will create different answers uh, because it is creating content. Um, this is one, one way you can use the model. The next one is SQL. Uh, instead of me, right, if I don't know how to write the select statement, I can specify like from the PostgreSQL, give me these call, these tables, employee department and salary, what columns I need. And I just explain what the query that I need to get. And I hit generate, boom, you will get the query. So it wrote the entire query. This is the, another feature of it. Now, you can also ask this to write Kusto queries and few other things. I'll show you how uh, it can write a Python machine learning code um, once we go through with this. Same API, if you want to have a lot of content and if you want to categorize them into buckets and you want to do that, you can specify a sample here, say what classification that you want to provide, give the content. Um, the sample says news article, but it'll work with any content. And then say classify category, it'll come up and it'll give you the answer. So it figured out that this this article is cooking up on a new kind. It's talking about talking about uh, entertainment. Um, this is an, another very interesting feature. So, for example, you have a bunch of text here, and you wanted to extract uh, information out of it, like product information, cat product categories, and things like that. You can specify uh, what's the format you want. Here we are looking at fruit color and flavor, right? And you're giving them a sam uh, giving the model a sample and say hit generate. Now it'll go and it'll pull up categories from here, like poor units, uh, bright green, savory, and then it'll 
pecan like uh, the other ones like loop what is uh, that here is the gloves and glo gloves uh, so from a regular uh, unstructured content this can go pick up information for us this is a very simple um, simple another one if you have you categorizing some of your data sets and if you wanted to ask it like okay I'm going to categorize Facebook, LinkedIn, Uber with categories, and then I'm going to ask what FedEx is, and it'll come and say logistics. Um, so it says courier, logistics, and delivery. Um, general knowledge-wise, this works extremely very well. Uh, really quick, let's see Dali, and then we'll come back, okay? Uh, so Dali, uh, a man, uh, human, working in moon, just ask anything, like, I mean, I just wanted to know like what what would it look like um this is also going to go it should be coming in soon um so you can see it actually created a content wow um it created an, an image so this is uh, generative ai so we are not it's not it's not looking at a uh, picture and pulling that and displaying here it is creating its own image um that's the that's the gist of the API itself, what it can do. Uh, now, before uh, Ron asks some questions, I'm going to come to you, Ron. Before that, I'm going to I'm going to say like uh, write a Python code for machine learning. This is a very the, mostly like even in my day to day day to day life, I do this. Um, I can do this. Um, and I can ask it to write a code and you'll be surprised that it wrote the code for me end to end. It is that, it is, it is that very powerful. Now, will it replace me? No, um, it is meant to help me. Uh, so that's why uh, if, I, if I need to write a code, if I don't remember, I can ask it to write a code. It will give me the snap snippets. I still have to use my own tools to test it, validate it, make sure that the business logic is there. You have to do all of those things. So don't take this as it's replacing. It is like, I call it my own personal buddy because it helps me to do it. Now, Ron, let's come to your question. What was your question that you wanted to ask? Well, my question was, can you compare the last quarter sales of Microsoft Cloud versus AWS Cloud? Amazon Cloud or AWS Cloud? Okay, well, doesn't matter. Yeah, well, so, let, let, let's see how good it is because right. let's see if OpenAI knows that AWS is the Amazon Cloud. Okay, let's look at that. Uh, also, you will also see it won't know the current information, but it will know the information from 2020. So it did pick up Amazon, so it did know what you're doing. And of course, Microsoft, I didn't plan this, Microsoft 31% growth and Amazon was only 30%. Ron, one quick thing, sure. uh, if you don't mind. Yep. Um, so uh, this is uh, the Bing version of uh, OpenAI. Um, you can actually, uh, um, it's just, this, is, this is the chat GPT conversation. Um, you can ask like, why is Angel Beat Conference better than other others um so this is the new uh, bing uh, bing integration with chat gpt um you can check it out with bing.com slash new um and this will actually um not the open ai but this chat gpt in bing will even cite where it is picking up the content from so you can see um but it won't be cut and paste it is going to create so Check it out and Ron, like, send me the questions. We'll definitely get them answered. Got it. Okay. Final thoughts are when you're looking at this capability, I would encourage everyone after the event, email me back, see how you think this could be deployed in your environment. We'll set up questions. I really think that all of you need to embrace this. There's no point in being scared about this. It will change jobs, but it'll create new jobs and it creates new opportunities. And that's really what we want to do at AngelBeat is give you insights and firsthand knowledge of what's new out there so you can get promoted, you can advance in your career, and you can help ensure that your employer remains 
at the head of the industry and is very flexible, secure, leading edge, et cetera, et cetera. 